old Farmer Dre back at it, folks, out here in the strawberry fields. I'm going to go ahead and start running fertilizer on our strawberries. Show you guys the strawberry crop itself. I got to turn on the uh, clean water irrigations, the clean water to start running through the lines. It's the first time this year we are running water through the drip. So I want to make sure the water, clean water is going through. Check the field for no leaks and then we'll start fertilizing. But I'm out here in the tulips. Well, yesterday we had to irrigate our tulips. Um, we had to put out the wobblers there. And uh, this has been extremely dry. This is unirrigated dirt right there. It's just extremely dry out here in Missouri. We had to run irrigation on the tulips. And uh, yeah, it, since it's dry, it's in the water. So I'm just going to disconnect this uh, cam lock here and connect to the strawberry field. There are more efficient ways of doing this. We just have a bunch of lay flat, this blue lay flat, and we just drag it to the header line here. So we got this cam locks. We just lock it in there, and that's it. Turn this valve here in the well house. Got to get this all cleaned up from last year. We're just clean water going through there now. All right, so we got clean water running through the drip system now. And I want to go ahead and show you guys how these plants are doing and some of the challenges we've been faced with this year. And not only me on our farm here, but strawberry farmers throughout the whole US, especially here in the Midwest, have just been struggling um, with a new disease that emerged. And uh, I'll talk more about that in a second here. But I got three varieties this year. I got Ruby June. I got a new variety from the Netherlands called SB025. And then I got Fawn Terrace. So uh, I've grown Ruby Junes and Fonterras before, and I've never grown the SB025. It's a number variety, but seems very promising. Down in Florida, where they have grown it, it seems to be doing really, really, really well. So um, we are excited about the three varieties that we are growing this year. But for it being March, uh, end of March here, these plants are looking fabulous. These Ruby Junes are looking amazing, as you can see here. They are growing buds, blooms everywhere. So that means in 30 days or so, we will have a ton, a ton of beautiful, beautiful berries on these Ruby Junes. The plants look great. The crowns are looking amazing as well. So these plants right here are looking absolutely awesome. The way we grow strawberries out here on our farm are on, is on plastic mulch with a row of irrigation underneath each row. We plant all of our plants in September of each year. So every single year after we're done harvesting, we come through here down, mow down the plants, clean up the field. We either lift up the plastic mulch or plant another crop in here. But each September, we plant an entire new crop of strawberries. We buy in plug plants, and then we grow them in the fall season. We overwinter them, and in the spring, they go ahead and bloom and we pick our crop. So it's usually about nine months, a nine month process from planting to harvest. Now let's talk about how our suppliers get their plants. So each year, uh, our suppliers get their tips. So they're running off the plants from nurseries up in Canada. They ship them out to our suppliers, which my supplier is in Southern Illinois. He grows out the tips usually in Ju June, July, and August, he's planting the tips in the 50 cell count trays and then he sends them to us with their nice root system and ready to go in the ground. I'd be thinking to yourself, Dre, why don't you just grow your own plants? Well, each year, so we discard our entire planting of strawberries just because down here in the Midwest, we are prone to a lot of fungal diseases, a lot of root diseases, a lot of bacteria diseases. And each year we like to start off with a clean, slate of plants that don't have any disease don't have any issues and up in canada they get cold enough in the winter where they don't fight many of the diseases that we fight down here so the plants up there are grown in canada they cut off the tips send them to our supplier he grows up plants then we plant them in our fields well that seems nice and dandy with one exception if the guys from canada have disease in their plants the disease up there is carried on down here and that's the only flaw in the system is 
up to this point, year after year, the Canada guys who grow the mother plants have never had an issue growing uh, nice, healthy plants that are disease-free, except to this point. Past two years, the guys up in Canada have been fighting with a disease called neopestilosis. It's a disease that affects the root system of the plants. And since us as farmers in the Midwest, we discard all of our plants, we're at the mercy of those guys to send us nice, healthy plants to our suppliers. And that's how the, the, the business has been running for years. Unfortunately, this disease, well, it's called the Neop, that's what everybody else is calling it, has affected thousands and millions and millions of plants throughout the whole U.S., even in Florida, California, the Midwest. So we even have it on our plants here on our farm this year, and it is terrible. We have to stay on top of spring. We got to take care of them. And we've also lost about a third of our entire planting due to this disease. Think, well, Dre, what kind of disease plants do you have? Because these plants look great. So these plants over here look great, but let me show you some plants that do not look as good. That is why it's very important to turn on your water before you fertilize each year, because you might end up with a busted pipe like that one. As I'm walking through the field, I'm trying to listen for any leaks in the irrigation and any like hissing sounds where the plastic is touching the water, touching the plastic. But as you can see here, this part of the field is looking absolutely great. We are on track for another amazing season. This side of the field looks really, really good. Everything's looking awesome, ready for another season. And on this side, the exact same plants came from the exact same supplier. You guys spot the difference? Yeah, I do too. In other words, it's just at the mercy of hopefully this whole deal gets fixed right and everything turns out to be good. Um, these plants here don't look like they're gonna produce just about anything. They were covered, fertilized, planted just like every other plant here on our farm. But with that disease, it destroyed them. So this side of the, this side of half of the field, um, in the fall, we realized that, hey, they're not gonna do much. So we didn't even try to cover these with row cover um, just because this row was covered with row cover and this row wasn't. They look the exact same, same treatment, same process, same fertilizer, same everything. So as of today, I have 10,000 Ruby June that look extremely good. I have 5,000 of that new variety the SB025. Um, it's new to us. It's new to the uh, industry. The nice thing about the 025s, it, it, it seems to be resistant to the Neo P. So it's kind of a, I'm kind of blessed to have it. We have 5,000 on our farm here this year. So we're really excited to see how they turn out and how, the, how well they work for us. And then we also have 10,000 Fawn Terrace that look really good as well. The SB025 is a much smaller plant than the Ruby June, and that is to be expected. But so far, they look good. They're growing nice and healthy. We had to come to here and pull the weeds and clean them all up. We just uncovered them not too long ago. So um, yeah, putting on the fertilizer and we will see how it goes this year, guys. Two biggest things that kill strawberry plants that are affected on Neo P is heat and humidity. And out here in Missouri, we get a lot of that, especially towards the last week of May into June. Temperatures can rise up to the 90s and really hot and humid. So what I've heard and seen everybody kind of say is the earlier the crop you can put on your plants, the better it is. Get your plants on your crops, get them harvested, get them out of the field, get them picked. We are a U-pick operation. So for us, our customers are out here picking the fruit getting them all cleaned up and taking home and processing themselves. So we are not a commercial grower where we have to put them in the clamshell and sell them. But that being said, we still, it still is, is affecting us pretty drastically. But that's why I'm super grateful that these plants are looking good. Now let's hope and pray that everything turns out well and we're able to have strawberries for at least four weeks here on our farm. And then we'll figure out something else to keep our customers happy, to have a motive to come to the farm. But that's kind of the whole strawberry business and the issues and the devastating news um, that the strawberry business is in this year. Hopefully things turn around. Hopefully the SB025 really kicks some butt this year and turns out to be a really good variety. 
and we're able to continue to grow strawberries that we've been doing it on our farm for many more years to come. So I got a bag of triple 20 mixed up. For now, that's what I'm gonna use. Got the uh, Massey injector here, running it. It's just uh, going slow. Since it has been dry outside, I would do want to irrigate as well. So I'm letting it run for a little while. So uh, we'll be back after a while, make sure everything is good.